There's two possible things that are about to happen. Both of them mean Tesla vehicles by the end of this year being produced in Germany will be significantly better than the ones being produced today, right now. This is a huge change and it's about to happen within the next two months. Three things just happened in the Tesla universe, which nobody seems to have really picked up on. I think they're pretty important and pretty significant. But one insignificant thing just happened. Tesla released two new paint colors. Frankly, I prefer the crimson one. Let me know which one you prefer in the comments section below. Now let's get to the real news. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel on the Electric Viking. My name's Sam Evans and I'm coming to you from Melbourne in Australia. What a great day it is here in the electric world. So much has happened in the past week. Goodness me, I'm excited, positive, and really stoked to bring you this news. Tesla, what's going on at Tesla? Well, for one, they just released two new multi-layered paint colors called Midnight Cherry Red and Quicksilver. The Quicksilver color is kind of like a, I don't know, it's like a crazy kind of metallic silver you'd see on maybe a Lamborghini or something like that. Personally, I'm a big fan of the Midnight Cherry Red. Now, bad news for everyone outside of Europe and the Middle East. They're only going on cars for Europe and the Middle East. In addition, they're not exactly cheap. Quicksilver paint option is about 3,000 US dollars. Midnight Cherry Red is about 3,120 US dollars. Now, Elon actually tweeted and he said, only Giga Berlin can make these paint colors as a paint shop was specially built to apply many fine layers of paint, giving it complexity not otherwise possible. Now, that's not the real news here. I mean, who really cares? Just a couple of paint colors there. The real news here is this. Tesla's vehicles at its factory in Germany, right? They got to contribute to a pretty amazing number next year. First of all, the Tesla Model Y will unquestionably outsell the Ford F-150, possibly this year, but unquestionably next year. In addition to that, the Model Y next year and potentially this year will become the world's best-selling model of car, period. I'm not talking about best-selling electric car. I'm talking about best-selling car in the world. Now, I reported this a few happening more than likely a few months ago, but we're getting closer to that date now. And Elon has just quoted about it, which is quite interesting. Now, according to the latest estimates from Bloomberg New Energy Finance, Tesla has delivered 500,000 Model Y electric crossovers so far in 2022. And it wasn't long ago before Tesla was only delivering 500,000 vehicles, period, globally. Based on 2021 sales, the Model Y would already be in the top eight list for 2022. Last year, Model 3 came ninth in the world. That's not in EVs, that's just in global model sales. It wasn't far behind the Ford F-150, the Toyota RAV4, and the Toyota Corolla, which each had around 1.1 million deliveries. Now, Dave Lee tweeted this, if you missed Tesla's earnings, shared in the call, he thinks the Model Y will become the top selling vehicle of any kind in 2022 or 2023. I mean, I'm certain it will be in 2023. Model, will it happen in 2022? Um, maybe, maybe not. Depends on how Tesla go in the fourth quarter. I would say it's going to be close, but probably won't quite get there this year. Next year, though, almost certain. But Elon said something interesting. Based on revenue in 2022, yes. Based on total units in 2023, yes. So he's saying he doesn't think it's going to happen in terms of total sales this year. But based on revenue, it will be the clearly, easily the world's highest grossing vehicle this year. However, next year is when it will become the world's most sold vehicle globally. Now, more important than that, in my view, is what is happening with this vehicle. New battery packs, BYD battery packs, CATL battery packs, new LFP technology. And Tesla is doing something at Gigafactory Factory Berlin. It is going to be producing electric vehicles with mega castings and structural battery packs by the end of 2022. Now, the thing is, how can they produce a vehicle with a structural battery pack by the end of 2022, if they're not using 4680 cells at Gigafactory Berlin. Now think about that question for a second. How are Tesla going to produce a battery pack? I mean, a structural battery pack, which is made for 4680 cells if they're using 2170s. It doesn't, it doesn't work, it doesn't make sense, right? Well, I think I know the answer here. First though, 
Tesla will be using front and back mega castings and structural battery packs produced on vehicles at Giga Berlin before the end of this year. That should mean Tesla's margins will improve on their cars made in Germany, and of course, the vehicles should also be lighter. In addition, they're gonna have more structural rigidity. Having structural battery packs, having giga castings reduces the weight of the car, reduces the complexity, and it increases the structural rigidity. It's really a win-win. Here's what Tesla said. At Gigafactory Texas, we have begun production of Model Y since early this year that use front and rear body castings in conjunction with a structural battery pack. Castings of this size have never been mass produced before in any industry by anyone except Tesla in our Fremont and Shanghai factories. We plan to introduce the front castings and structural battery packs at Gigafactory Berlin, Brandenburg before the end of this year. Now, that's interesting information here. For those of you unaware, Tesla are already doing it at the Gigafactory in Shanghai. That's the fact that not many people are aware of that Tesla are already doing this at Gigafactory Shanghai. So part of the challenge they said of making such large castings, eliminating 170 separate components, is that all the aluminum needs to be injected into a die in about one tenth of a blink of an eye through a single point of entry without solidifying or distorting. That's what Tesla said. That sounds like a pretty big challenge. Obviously, Tesla has already figured out how to make it work using their own proprietary metal. Now, Tesla Rati believe, they suggest, right, that the introduction of structural battery packs mean Tesla might start rolling out 4680 battery cells at Tesla's factory in Germany, in Berlin. I think that's highly unlikely. I think that's incredibly improbable when Tesla need those batteries desperate, desperately for Cybertrucks, right? And for the semi. Why would Tesla start sending 4680s from America to Germany? That to me is a financial disaster of a plan. It doesn't make any sense. Why would you do that when you could just send batteries produced in China straight to Germany? It really doesn't make financial sense. I mean, we're talking about a product that's gonna cost at least twice as much. That's a company saying, yeah, we're focused on margins. We're focused on producing product at the cheapest possible cost, at the cheapest possible cost, as efficiently as possible. We wanna produce good product, lighter weight vehicles at margin. Are they gonna really send 4680 cells from the United States to Germany to do that? Maybe in five years, but today, highly improbable. Clearly, this, the plan here, in my view, is to do one of two things. One, use 2170s in structural battery packs. Now, is that possible? Maybe, are they gonna do that? I think it's less likely than the other alternative, which is simply to start using CATLs, structural battery pack technology, CTP, they call it. M3P batteries will be available in December of this year, right? Basically, CATL is saying, we're mass producing these new batteries, right? At our factory in Shanghai, down the road from Tesla's business, we already use those batteries in Tesla vehicles, right, that are shipped to Germany. So why not ship those batteries and those packs straight to Germany, put them in Tesla's vehicles at the factory in Germany? It just makes too much sense. Those batteries are the cheapest, right? They have the highest energy density of any LFP packs currently commercially available in the world. Um, and Tesla's going, no, 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 we don't want those. Those, are, those have 20% more energy efficiency. Those have 20% more energy density than the old packs. They're structural cell to pack technology. CHL says they can go straight into a Tesla vehicle and they say they're the same price as the existing LFP technology, which is 50% of the price of 4680s. And Tesla's like, no, 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 we don't want that. We don't want that. We don't want to save money. We're just going to use 4680s. That to me doesn't add up. But hey, I'm just trying to connect the dots here. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section below. Which do you think is more likely? Tesla to use 4680 cells produced in America in German-made vehicles, or Tesla to continue using LFP batteries they're already using in Chinese-made vehicles that are being sold in Germany, but instead of that, shipping the battery packs to Germany where they can be installed in the factory by Tesla using CATL's very, very affordable structural battery pack with LFP batteries. That, in my view, is the likely end game. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.